this uh, workshop. So I uh, sorry. Uh, so I uh, plan to uh, discuss about this work, which is basically the uh, you know synthetic material, the how to get this uh, correlated phases and dynamics of the Reed ultra cold Rydberg atoms in presence of the dissipation. So this work is done in collaboration with uh, Shayok Ray and uh, Tush Shaha and Krishnendu Shen Gupta. Shayok is present in this, uh, he was also there in the school and the workshop, he's a uh, graduate student of ISAR and uh, Kush is a postdoc now and Krishnendu was, he, has, he was there but today morning has left I think. So, So the, this is uh, a uh, rough plan of this or outline of this talk. So first I'll just discuss briefly about this Rydberg atom and why it is sort of a candidate for realizing some sort of uh, some correlated phases of this synthetic ultra cold material. And uh, then I'll just go to the modeling of this system by this Hubbard model of the Rydberg atom in the optical lattice, then phase diagram and excitation. And finally I'll just go to this Phase, di phase uh, the frozen Rydberg atom, this part probably I'll just skip because the time is limited. And then the superfluid mod insulator transition in the in presence of dissipation. And then also the dynamics in presence of dissipation this is the plan. So this is a typical uh, textbook level picture of uh, the Rydberg atom. This we generally, uh, we are very much familiar when you study this uh, modern physics uh, type of course or etc. So uh, this is a highly excited state of the atom when the outer shell of the electron is, of the atom is uh, excited to a very large excited level. Maybe the excitation can be up of the order of 80 or 70, this uh, quantum number. And this is uh, more similar or very close to the classical description of this atom or close to the Bohr model of this atom. This is a classical, almost a semi-classical picture of this atom, but the main point, that main property of the Rydberg atom for which it has become or it is considered to be a very strong candidate to observe very uh, type, many, many type of this uh, correlated phases is the uh, strong dipole moment of this Rydberg atom. So if it is excited to a very large excited uh, level, so which can be 870, 80, then this Rydberg atom has also very large radius which scales as n square order. n is the excitation number of this outermost electron. And also this uh, creates a dipole moment which goes as also n square order. And uh, by, by using applying a laser field or this two photon excitation, it's called a two photon excitation in the quantum optics language. So this can be excited, the ground state to excited state can be created to a very large excitation. And also this created the two Rydberg atom, the two excited atoms, they have, they feel this very strong Van der Waals type of interaction, which goes as C6 divided by R to the 6 type of uh, interaction, long range interaction. And uh, this, uh, this coefficient C6 of this, uh, uh, of this Van der Waals like interaction that scales as n to the power 11, this is a typo, is n to the 11 there. So this is the main ingredient to create or synthetically synthet generating the synthetic correlated material in this case. And for typically for ultra cold atomic system, the problem is that this is only the on-site interactions that generated. So it's very difficult to generate the long range interaction. So Rydberg is a uh, candidate to uh, create these types of long range interaction and to see many broken translational, translational broken symmetric phases. So we are uh, motivated by this experiment, which is done at the group, PISA group, the group of Arimondo. So where they have created a uh, one-dimensional, quasi-one-dimensional condensate in an optical lattice. And then by applying an external laser field, the excitations are created, the Rydberg excitations are generated, which of course created a very strong this Van der Waals like interaction and they can also see how this uh, number of excited states are created with the uh, increasing the laser frequency. This is they have studied. But the important fact is that when this condensate is finally released from this optical lattice, 
then they interfere and finally these brag peaks are appearing so the central peak and there are two brag peaks are appearing so which is says that the condensation is not destroyed by these strong rydberg excitations so this actually gives us the opportunity to study the superfluid mode or different type of phases in this system rydberg uh, phase so first we uh, we just uh, model this system by this uh, by this Hamiltonian. So this Hamiltonian contains these three parts. So first H naught. H naught is basically on-site part of this Hamiltonian. So before describing the Hamiltonian, I just switch, I just describe these uh, two types of bosonic states. So A dagger that creates a boson at the ground state, whereas this B dagger that creates a boson at the excited state. So there are two states are there. So it's a type of a pseudo, pseudo spin language one can represent this thing. So one is a ground state and another is an excited state. So the first term, this is like a coupling. This is a coupling generated by the external radio field. It's called the Rabi, Rabi frequency with omega. So this couples the ground state and the excited state. Then the second term is a typical chemical potential term, and third term, which is called the, in the quantum optics language, it is the, uh, the detuning term, but it is not very important to understanding the various phases in this system, but it's important for the experimental context because there is always the detuning is present. Then there's an the on-site interaction term. So if the atoms are in the ground state and at each side there are more than one atom, then it will cause some energy, that is U, that's the on-site repulsion, typical uh, Howard-like interaction. And then there is another part of this interaction, which is the uh, ground state and the excited state type of interaction. This is the on-site part of this Hamiltonian. Next is H1, which is just the kinetic energy term. So uh, the ground state, atoms at the ground state, they can hop from one side to another side. That's a typical uh, uh, hopping, and the hopping strength is J. But the excited state uh, hopping strength, we can take slightly different from the ground state, which can be different because of this, uh, you know, the, the one-year wave function may be changed in these cases. So we just keep it a different thing. And then there is a third term, which is very important in the context of Rydberg, ultra-cold Rydberg atoms, which is the uh, long-range interaction between the excited states. So this interaction is only present between the excited state, and this is very strong. So this strong Rydberg repulsion or Rydberg interaction, in fact, give rise to something called the Rydberg blockage, which is very similar to the Coulomb blockage in a quantum dot. So if one Rydberg excitation is generated at some point, then it hinders another excitation within certain radius. So in our model, we just considered this is like an hard core type of bosons. So this excited states of the Rydberg atom is just like a hard core type of hard core nature. So there's a one excitation, then there will be no other excitations. So you put this con condition constraint that B dagger square acting on zero, uh, acting on this vacuum is equal to zero. So this is a hard core constraint on it. And uh, this uh, more details can be found in this uh, reference. So this uh, model can be analyzed with a simple uh, good Schuyler like mean field uh, variational wave function. So this Gutzwiller is not the same as this uh, fermionic case, but this is a bosonic type of Gutzwiller wave function for bosons. So uh, the total wave function is decomposed in a product state of the each side wave function, and each side the wave function can be written as the linear combination of the number states. So NIA, that is basically the number of uh, particle or number of atoms in the ground state, and NIB is the number of atoms in the excited state. And this is restricted up to one, so it can take only the value from zero or one. This is the uh, wave function. And if, if i's are the Gutzwiller amplitude, so we can find out the uh, energy from this variational wave function, which is h minus mu n, and then we minimize this energy with respect to the Gutzwiller amplitude, and that gives the uh, different phases, various phases. So we expect, of course, uh, I'll just discuss that what type of phases we uh, we expect in this Hamiltonian. 
So as we first we did, first I discussed this uh, insulating phases of this system. So if we increase the chemical potential, then the different types of uh, insulating phases with the uh, filling fraction like zero, half, uh, one, three by two, etc. These types of phases appears. So there's a uniform mod phase can uh, can be can uh, can be created, which is which corresponds to this filling one or filling two maybe also is possible, but the difference between usual mod uh, phase and this phase is that that there every side there can be one particle or n num n zero number of particle, but this uh, particle this uh, this state can be a linear combination of the ground state and excited state. So there can be the possibility that n zero number of particle in the ground state and zero excitation, or there can be n zero minus one number of particle in the ground state and one excitation, and this can be linear combination. So these types of mod phase can be can appear in this. Also, we can have the density wave-like phase, which is a filling of uh, n is equal to half. So there are two sublattice structures. This is schematically shown in this figure. So this is the mod phase. And the density wave phase, there's a one side, there's a one particle, then an excite is uh, back and then next side is appearing. So basically these types of ordering is happening because we are considering, we are just truncating the long range interaction by just the nearest neighbor type of interaction and these phases can appear. So there are also the density wave phase can have uh, these types of combination. So there can be one particle, one at a ground state and zero excitation, or there is a zero particle at the ground state and one excitation, there's a linear combination is also possible. And when these phases melt, like this mod phase when melt, it will just give rise to the homogeneous superfluid, but when this uh, super solid, like or translational broken st uh, states are uh, created, this uh, density wave-like states, when these states will melt, then they naturally give rise to a super solid-like Phase. Of course, this is uh, the stability of these phases are under question. That we have to, one has to do it more careful analysis to understand whether one can really observe this super solid phase or not. Then uh, this is the rough phase diagram of this system. So uh, as I mentioned, there is a, a n is equal to zero state is there. There's nothing is there. Then there is a n is equal to one mod state, uniform mod state, and in between there can be a density wave, n is equal to half state can be produced. And uh, around this density wave phase, we can see a very tiny region. There is a super solid phase also can be there, and then mod phase can melt and give rise to a uniform or homogeneous super, super fluid phase. But if we increase this uh, Van der Waals-like interaction, then we can see this uh, super solid phase, the region of the super solid phase that increases. And apart from that, there can be another interesting type of uh, state can be created, which we are we are uh, just uh, saying this like a canted Ising antiferromagnetic phase. I'll discuss this thing. So uh, there is also, and uh, one can also generate an uh, effective spin model in this uh, Rydberg, Rydberg uh, atom. So if we, if, if we have one, only one particle in each, one particle in each side, then, or frozen Rydberg basically in the mod limit, then still each Rydberg atom has this uh, freedom that it can be in the ground state or in the excited state. And this is, uh, can be represented by a pseudo spin uh, representation. So spin down can be represented by the ground state and the spin up is the excited state in this way. So it ultimately, it uh, give rise to some spin Hamiltonian where there is a, some antiferromagnetic term which is generated because of this long range interaction or the Van der Waals like interaction. And there is a, uh, some, if one can think of an effective magnetic field along the X axis. So this effective magnetic field is related to the Ravi frequency, these types of Hamiltonian. So this naturally gives rise to a broken symmetry phase also. There's a, uh, it's called the canted antiferromagnetic uh, phase there. So one spin is, uh, some angle is there. The next side, the spin has a different angle. So these types of phase can be, can appear, or can be realized in this uh, type of frozen limit of this grid bar physics. So this is called the frozen limit because we are just neglecting the kinetic energy term and it is insulating phase. So there's a frozen limit of this. So the spin model easily gives rise to these types of uh, canted antiferromagnetic phase and because of this thing, the super solid phase also increases. There is a large proportion super solid. 
So these are the roughly the phases one can realize in this uh, Rydberg uh, pro or ultra cold Rydberg atoms in an optical lattice. We can also calculate the excitations in the uh, in this system by this uh, time dependent by generalizing this Fitzwiller theory from time dependent theory and linearizing this. One can calculate the excitations. The interesting excitation in the super solid phase. There are very there are different modes are mixed up and it, it gives rise to very interesting uh, excitation spectrum. Anyway. So the main problem is that so far, whatever we have analyzed is that uh, in terms of the Hamiltonian only. So we just constructed the Hamiltonian of the system and understood the phase diagram, the equilibrium phases. But the problem is in the Rydberg atom, the, when this is excited, then they can be also spontaneously de-excited. There is spontaneous emission, spontaneous decay. So system is not in the equilibrium. So one has to take care of this decay term. So uh, to understand this decay process, we just considered, we are not looking into all these phases, but just, but just concentrate in the mod to superfluid transition in presence of the dissipation or the decay term. So we uh, try to analyze this system in terms of the master equation the approach, which is the Lindblad form in the master equation. The density matrix, we consider the density matrix and the Hamiltonian, etc. And this L is the dissipator, which is very important in this context. So this dissipator contains something like AI dagger B, which means there will be a spontaneous decay. The excitation can be decayed to the ground state and the coefficient is square root of gamma. Gamma is basically the decay rate of this system. So this term is important in the context of this Rydberg physics. And then we analyze these uh, phases by this mean field decomposition of the density matrix. We just took this rho is a product of this rho i and did the calculation. It, 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 one, can, one can do this calculation within this mean field decomposition almost analytically. And this is done in this, uh, in this work. Uh, most of the hard work is done by uh, Shayok, who is present in this workshop. So these are the uh, phases we got. So there is a phase diagram in the hopping strength and also the dissipation strength. So you see that as the strength of the dissipation increases, that destroys the superfluidity and it goes into the some type of insulating phase. I do not, I, I, okay, we are saying this is a mod phase, but it's something different from usual mod phase. It is more like a thermal phase. It's an insulating phase, but with a, some type of a, meaning any arbitrary density it can take. So these types of insulating phase it can create. And these phase boundaries can be calculated analytically in the hardcore limit. And we also calculated the entropy from this uh, density matrix, a simple formula, and we calculated the derivative of the uh, entropy with respect to this dissipator, gamma, where we find there is a jump, which is just analogous to the these types of continuous transition, equilibrium transition. Also, we have found out the order parameter, two types of superfluidity will be present, the ground state superfluidity and the excited state superfluidity, both vanishes at some critical gamma. So these types of feature can be observed. There are two types of superfluid parameters are there, A average and B average, and they have some phases. The important interesting thing is the relative phase between this superfluidity that is locked at the fixed point. For uh, finite U, that was for the hardcore boson, but for finite U also we can do the numerical calculation starting from the Goodswiller wave function, we constructed the density, and then we evolved this density, it is a master equation, and found the, obtained the steady state. From this we uh, constructed this phase diagram. So there also we obtained a similar behavior that uh, large dissipation can destroy the superfluidity. Also we can see there is a jump in the entropy derivative of this entropy. Then we did the uh, linear stability analysis of this system. So every element of this density matrix can be decomposed into two parts. One is the steady state value, and then there is something with the fluctuation. And the fluctuating part goes as it to be called lambda t. Lambda is the uh, eigenvalue that we have to determine, and we linearize this equation, this implied equation, in terms of these small uh, fluctuations. So this lambda that has two parts, one is the real part and the imaginary part. 
so the stability of the phases is ensured from this fact that lambda r for all k values that has to be less than equal to zero. That is the stability condition of the phases. And uh, then from the imaginary part, we can get the collective modes. So in the superfluid phase, we find this collective mode as a, this uh, linear behavior sound like collective mode, then there is a, some excited states are there, excited states are there. And in the mode phase, we find the gapped uh, excitation, there is a gap also. And this is the real part of this exercise. It doesn't make any sense, but only thing is that it ensures the stability of these phases. So oh, this is actually something with a zero uh, mode that is uh, appearing, in fact, here. Okay. So something is zero is And uh, then we also calculated the uh, superfluid, the sound velocity. We found that sound mode vanishes at the phase boundary. The sound velocity is also uh, sound velocity that vanishes at the phase boundary. And this gap that what I uh, just discussed here, if we just approach from the mod to uh, superfluid phase, then this gap in the mod phase that also vanishes. So this gap vanishes linearly at the superfluid phase. So this, uh, from this observation, we can infer that the dynamic critical exponent is something like z is equal to 2 here. And uh, well, it's very similar to the equilibrium uh, phase transition. Then one can also uh, generalize this theory in the deep superfluid limit where we have taken an ansatz for this uh, density matrix in this form, which is very similar to the Glover Sudarshan uh, P representation type of. So the ground state can be uh, uh, sort of uh, represented by the coherent state, and the excited state, that is the B dagger, can be just replaced by the, uh, by the spin variable, the sigma plus, for the hardcore limit, because B dagger is for the hardcore creation of the hardcore boson. So one can just consider this thing as a coherent state with a two degrees of freedom. One is a ground state, a downspin corresponds to the ground state, and the upspin is the corresponds to the excited state. And one can get the different uh, expectation values like number of excitation as well as the sigma plus average, etc. So the two types of superfluidity we find that is the same behavior with a dissipated as we increase the dissipation strength or decay strength then the superfluidity also decreases in that way. And we also obtained a, uh, some gapless sound mode here. And another mode is gap. Next, we also calculated, also studied the non-equilibrium quench dynamics from superfluid to mott insulator phase. We considered two types of protocols. One is the linear quenching J, the hopping strength. We took it from Ji to Jf, it's a linear quench. And also the, uh, the, the dissipator also is quenched from the gamma i to gamma f with a linear order, linear, uh, linear fashion. So there, we calculated the entropy and as well the superfluid order parameters. Superfluid order parameters, they decay almost exponentially, but entropy shows very interesting feature so in case of this uh, quench in the dissipator, it shows the entropy as a very, uh, very strong effect, apparently. It is behaving in a strong uh, way, fashion, this uh, variation. Whereas for the quench in J, we see this asymptotically, it just reaches the asymptotic value of this entropy. Also, it has a, uh, another effect that we, we calculated the uh, the deviation of the entropy. That means we quenched it up to some time, T max, and calculated the entropy from these dynamics. And from the steady state, the entropy is S0. We subtracted this thing from S0. So that is the change in the entropy. So change in entropy is something somewhat similar to the defect production. And we just calculated this, how this delta S scales with this T max, the quench time or quench rate in that. So we observed a very interesting behavior that in case of this quench in the dissipator, 
there we find that the uh, entropy, the, the deviation of this entropy delta s scales as 1 by t max to the power some k, which is very similar to this power law type Kivel Durek mechanism with this exponent k is order of 1. In the other case, this is just an exponential decay, whereas in when, when there is a quench in the j, so that is an exponential decay. So, uh, with this, this is, these are the main result of uh, this work and uh, we can also uh, generalize this type of theory for this symmetric broken phases. Insulating phases particularly there is some preliminary calculation has been done by Shayok and uh, I'm just, I, I don't want to go into the details of this theory but there are various uh, steady state solutions can be, can exist in this system there are some regime is there when there is no steady state solution is existing, but rather there is a symmetry broken phase can exist dynamically. So there are various interesting uh, features are there because of this dissipation term in this theory. Okay, so I'll uh, stop here and this summary is uh, the outlook basically. Uh, here we have just considered the nearest this long range interaction to the nearest neighbor interaction, but if we just uh, increase this interaction strength, then one can see various types of super solid like stri stripe super solid, etc. And also there can be a roton like excitation can be observed in the superfluid phase. Then uh, yeah, this uh, entropy generation in the quench dynamic that has to be understood in a better way, what is the main reason why there is a power law type of behavior can be observed in the system. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, questions? So that uh, dissipation, how does it compare with the, uh, like as a time scale with the Rabi frequency, is, is there some relationship which you have to yeah, actually this is very important. That's why there's a lot of debate going on. So the dissipation is, uh, the time scale is something like uh, 100 of millisecond, okay? Yeah. So the lifetime of the whole system is order of second. This way. Not okay, so the frequency is not the real uh, time scale here, but the time scale is the, ultimately it is restricted by the three body loss, etc. There's a time scale for this condensate also. For the Rydberg excitation, uh, the Rydberg excitation lifetime is order of hundred milliseconds. Hundred milliseconds. Yeah. 